All right, so I thought I'd do a follow-up to my uh, last video. I did replace this radiator fill port because that was melted. Uh, put used hoses in. Uh, I'm going to do a video on how to remove the radiator. And we're gonna pull that water pump cover off because I got a feeling with as hot as this thing got, the uh, impeller probably melted a little bit and is spinning on the shaft and the impeller isn't moving. They make uh, great aftermarket billet impellers, which I would recommend using. I'm gonna pull that hose, drain whatever coolant's left in there, and pull the cover off, check the impeller. And after I'm done, I'm also going to drain the oil. There's the oil plug down there, just to see if I got any coolant in the bottom of the case. This thing got that hot. I'm kind of wondering if the head gasket might have been blown. Well, well that radiator must be pretty blocked. Um, there wasn't a lot of coolant in there. This motor runs really good, but with the cooling issues, I'm kind of surprised the head, is, head gasket isn't leak. There's no coolant there. That's kind of a scary thought. All right, let's pull this bad boy off and see what we get. So I recommend doing this if you have uh, overheating issues. Um, a lot of times guys will go through, they say, oh yeah, replace the temperature sensor, replace the fan. Uh, I'm still overheating, so either the radiator could be plugged or this impeller could be bad. Ooh, that's pretty good. That impeller looks actually really good. One thing I like to check is if I spin the motor over and the impeller turns, then I know it's not slipping. My starter rope's broke, so I gotta take this cover off. Impeller is good, it's not moving on the shaft and it turns with the engine, so that's good. So now I'll clean that up, put a new gasket on. All right, so the impeller looks good. Now I want to check, see if the mechanical water pump seal behind the impeller is leaking. And how I do that is I'm going to drain the oil. Uh, you take a 14 millimeter wrench. And there's a bolt on the side of the case here. I already loosened it, so I'll get my hands in there. And I got long fingers, so that helps. If you can see right here, one, two fingers in the bottom, on the top. Try not to drop the bolt. And my container oil down below. Ooh. Well, it's really <sighs> that oil hasn't been changed in a while. I do not smell coolant, which is a good sign. Usually, if there was coolant on there, it would be milky white. So that's a good sign. I'm going to let that drain and then I'm going to do oil change on this right away. Place the filter. This guy did not maintain this very well at all. 
Like I said, I'm surprised this engine still runs. So we're gonna let that drain. I'm gonna pull a oil filter off and drain the reserve tank on the other side. And then get this all put back together. All right guys, let's go on to the last step. I'm gonna remove the radiator. But before I do that, I'm gonna do test the fan. I wanna make sure the fan is operational before I go through all the trouble of replacing the radiator. Put it all back together and finding out the fan doesn't work. So, make sure you disconnect your headlights. I got this all unbolted already, so should just pull out. Um, got a couple of tire wraps on here from the mount. Get the pull out. There you go. All right, so you have your wire right here. That goes to your main harness to your fan. Oh, I'm sorry. Your main harness to your temperature sensor on the radiator. And then this other wire goes to the fan. So you just connect this one. Whew. And <clears throat> so another thing you gotta be concerned about is they get crusty and sometimes they don't work. So now with this plug, now this is on Sportsman 400s, 500s. You can even do these on six and 700s. So I put a jumper wire here and here and turn the key on. Yeah, right, hear that? Fan's working. Good to go. So a lot of guys wonder how to hotwire their fans. This is a quick way to do it. Um, on these older models, I don't rely on the uh, temperature sensor on the radiator because probably what happened here, um, temperature sensor could be bad. You could just replace it, get an aftermarket temperature sensor. I like, if it's my own personal one, I'll just leave this hot wired and I'll tape it up, start it up, the fan's running constantly. That way you know the fan is on. All right, I might as well go through and unplug this because we're gonna remove the radiator. I do have half the hoses unplugged because as you saw, this melted. I replaced this with a 2001 Polaris Sportsman 500 hose and inlet. Uh, this is a 2003 400 four stroke. They're pretty similar. All right, so the next step is, I gotta cut more wire ties. You guys got this all tire wrapped up from his um, mount here. Get that out of the way. Uh, the choice is yours whether you want to unplug this or not. I'm going to try to get away with not doing it. So normally you'd take these bolts off here and here and the bolts here, remove the upper rack, and then you have to remove these bolts and these slide out so you can get to the radiator. I'm going to do that right now. Once you get the plastic stuff, it's actually fairly easy. Except when you lose your bolts, like I just did. <laughs> okay, we can pull this one off. And try not to lose the washer and. I like to put them on back on right away so I don't lose them. All right. Pull these off. And I believe this is uh, 7 16ths. Small little bolts. I 
Now if you see my previous video, you know I'm replacing this. It is pretty plugged up, the guy never cleaned the radiator, but this thing overheated so bad that the hose is melted. That's why I checked the, I checked the impeller, but I think all this black melted stuff got stuck in the radiator. The radiator does look good on the outside. I could try to flush it out, but with those little black rubber melted uh, things that are in there, it could be stuck in the radiator somewhere, so I don't trust that radiator. I'm just gonna pull that completely out. And I got one on order, I don't have one right now. Uh, I do have one in a box somewhere. Got at least the lower radiator clamp here, disconnect that. It's a lot easier to do with. There we go. One radiator removed. So, if you don't have the same issue I got going on, ooh, look at that. See all that stuff from the hose stuck in there? All that black crap. But I don't trust this. You could flush this out with the radiator out, get everything cleaned out. Uh, if you didn't have the same problem I did, say your radiator's just all full of mud, caked with dirt, uh, go ahead and remove it, flush it out really good with garden hose. This one I just don't trust at all, so I'm gonna completely replace it. All right, there you have it, folks. So now if you had an issue with your fan, now would be the time to replace your fan as well. It just comes off of here, it's plastic, or you can take the bolts off of here if you want. Take this off and that slides off backwards. Okay, so I hope this video helped you guys out. I know a lot of you guys are having overheating issues, um, at least some of you that contacted me did. I was questioning why this motor still ran and realized that this was used for plowing purposes. So I think the cold weather probably saved the motor. It just overheated the radiator and hopefully the guy was smart enough to shut it down before it destroyed the engine. So I fired this engine up, it seems to run good. The only thing I'm uncertain about is the head or the head gasket. And I'll find that out after I get the new radiator in. Like I said, it's pretty simple. There's, uh, there's actually two holes down here to go into and these rubber grommets go into it. So you slide that in those two holes, put it in, put your bolts in, put your brackets in, plug everything up, and you're good to go. Well, well, turned out I had a radiator after all. A box of radiators right here and some fans. I didn't think I had one, but uh, yeah, I came off a, a unit I stripped down about a year ago. This one's good, so I put it all back together, got the hose clamps on. Another thing I forgot to mention is your thermostat. So your thermostat's behind here. Pull them two screws off. I did that already. Pull that out. Your thermostat is behind there. If that's sticking closed or if it's faulty, it's not going to let coolant flow into the radiator. So I double checked that, made sure it was good, it's free. So just another thing to keep in mind. And then what I'll do is I'll take the radiator cap off, I'll fill it full of coolant, I'll like squeeze the hose to get the bubbles out, and I'll leave the cap off and run it for five minutes. I do have a temperature reading meter um, once it gets up to like, I think it's 165, don't quote me on that. Thermostat opens, this will burp, little coolant will pop out, it'll suck down, you'll be able to see it flowing. That's how I bleed the coolant system. Other, there's other methods you can use. Um, another way is uh, a lot of guys, they'll uh, lift up the front end of the whole unit. I've seen some guy ride it up on a st uh, some steps. So that way it's on an angle like this. All the air from the bottom of the radiator comes to the top, circulates out. A couple different methods. All right, guys. Hope you like this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it, and like always, till next time.